and gentlemen, thank you very much. We turned up. We turned up. I can't believe it. I can't believe you've come. Thank you very much for coming around to see me. Uh, some stuff. We're going to do some stuff tonight. But before we go any further, I just want to get this over with now. I'm going to tell you now, and then I don't want to hear her name mentioned again. I have, unfortunately, had to terminate my relationship with Tony Braxton. Okay? Sorry about that. It was a big thing. I know you're all excited. I thought it was going to be showbiz wedding, but it hasn't happened. Because she's just getting on my nerves all the time. Every time I want to go out, she says, no, don't go out, because if you ever leave me, I'll never breathe again. <laughs> breathe? There's a pain in the eye. I'm going out. She goes, right. <laughs> I hold my breath and I'll die. I says, Tony, I'm only going down the laundrette, so I've, I've got rid of her. All right? And the other piece of news, which you're going to be reading about in the paper, so I might as well tell you, I have had to resign from Take That. OK? <laughs> because I couldn't grow the rather stupid little goatee beard. That they <laughs> Simple as that. Got some great stuff this week. Been out shopping, got some books. You know, I've got 100 million thousand books, right? Got this one. Look at that. My Husband, Rock Hudson. <laughs> and that's by Phyllis Gates and Bob Thomas. <laughs> Phyllis Gates obviously helped him write it, so that's, <laughs> that's a very good book. So I'm going to crack on. I'm so tired. Terrible night last night. Great night, but terrible night. Didn't get to sleep until about 6 o'clock. Kate was round, Kate Moss, obviously. <laughs> she was round, that was nice. I must find her, because, look, look she, she left her leggings here, look. <laughs> Kate, Eve, bless her, she was there with that. Come here, I want to show you something, right? Come here. It's a great thing here, look. Oh, there's my photo. Dame Thora. I love her like a mother. And there is a suspicion that she may well be my mother. I don't know. That's Dame Thora. Look what I found, right? I was going through my loft, going through my attic, and I found this, look. Remember that? Remember when I used to wear that on stage? Remember? YMCA, <laughs> see, it's uh, in the Navy, you get to go in ships. It's brilliant. <laughs> Love that. That's that. Another brilliant thing, I had a great, uh, oh, top laugh the other day. The, um, the woman who used to be in the Brotherhood of Man, who was the one who stood sort of second from the right and couldn't get her leg over the chair, she was round, right? <laughs> had a couple of beers, piece, and I played this great trick on her at home. You just go, it's like a Coke. And she goes, oh, yeah, I'd love one. OK, I'll get you one then. And then you give her that, Panda Cola. <laughs> <laughs> Cost two bob a can, tastes of shit. They don't know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful stuff. Right, uh, you bother to come round. The least I can do is to stay in, although obviously, normally, this time of night, I'd be out. I'd be down Tramps, Groucho's and other clubs that I'm a member of that probably closed down years ago. Right? <laughs> All right, you ain't got nothing at all at the moment, but if you get any at all, you let me know. I don't, yeah, any, any type at all. As, yeah, as many as you've got, as many as you've got. You, you got my number? Yeah, Millsy. Oh, you give me a call, definitely, definitely, I'll have them off you. All right, and thanks. <laughs> all right, I want to show you this. This is the most fabulous thing you'll ever see, right? Until I show you another thing later. Right, this is, you know, I told you about my brother. Remember my brother? Right, I'll tell you what he does. He works for the police and he has access to a lot of tapes, right? Criminal tapes that I'm not allowed to show you, all right? Now, you can't show these because I signed the Official Secrets Act, all right? So which said I wouldn't show them. But when I signed it, I had my fingers like that behind my back. <laughs> and that's how I do it. But I'm all right because I'm a mason. Like that, so I can show it to you. I'll just play this, right? There's a commentary on it so you, you'll, you'll understand what's happening. Security videos reveal incompetence as much as dishonesty. Take this would-be robber, for instance. He strolls into a building society and hands over a demand note. Almost instantly, he finds himself in trouble. <laughs> All he has to do is pull the door open, pull it open. But for some reason, he thinks he has to push it. Excuse me. There's a customer here, and if you don't open the door... You don't open the door. Just pull it open, mate. It's not locked. <laughs> <laughs> no. Eventually, he escapes and is... He's top man in the world, isn't he? <laughs> I want to show you this, actually. This is, I think this is a brilliant bit of it. Look, his threat, his empty little threat. Look, he's trapped in there. He thinks the door's locked. He can't get out as far as he's concerned. Listen to what he says. Excuse me. Excuse me. There's a customer here. There's a customer here. If you don't open the door... If you don't open the door... <laughs> the police will come and I'll be arrested. <laughs> so there he goes, bang it out, bang it out. Well, look, what enormous strength and crass stupidity. Eventually, he escapes and is still... I have to say, he did escape and he's still at large. He did drop some very vital evidence, this little handkerchief here. 
<laughs> so they know his initials and that he had a really horrible snotty cold as well. <laughs> this is, um... That's a programme that was made ages ago about me and a group of my mates, right? I used to do this, uh, job, other job when I was a lot young. I don't know, some of you might have done it. Uh, knock him. Not stealing, knock him. What you do is you get a load of ooky gear, basically, and you go around people's houses with it and tries, and you sell it to him. you knock it. It's just salesman, door-to-door -door salesman. And, uh, this is me and my mates doing it. That's me there in the tank top and the short sleeve stripy <laughs> shirt. That's what we used to wear. We was trendy in them days, right? Let's just show it to you, because they're the happiest days of my life. Just us having a laugh, basically. There's the van we travelled in. Wally? That was a big word when I was a kid. Shut up, you Wally. Frat. Here we go. Bang on the van, open the door, have a laugh. That's how we used to chat with each other when we was kids. <laughs> Wally! <laughs> and we all, obviously we had loads of great tricks we used to do. Yes. Yeah. Wait, have you got some brakes on this finger on? What? You've got brakes on this finger on what? Yeah, you'll find out in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> that was the best trick. You've done that. You know you've all done that. Got any brakes on this? We'll find out in a minute. Yeah. Got any brakes? Find out in a minute. <laughs> this, other, this is another top trick we played. We had this lad, right? It was his, it was his first day on the job. And uh, we, get, we, sh we showed him the ropes, right? We gave him a little pep talk. But there was one thing that we didn't tell him. He coming out there. Bang the door up. That was... Bye, lads. See you later in the day, yeah, in our well, language. First thing you've got to say, sorry to trouble you, like, so they're on your side already. Yeah. Sorry to trouble you, love, from the Handicapped and Disabled Rehabilitation Centres. What are you doing? Trying to sell a few small household goods. They collate and pack to assist with their own rehabilitation. Oh, then then, then, just, then you yeah. go for the whatever you want. <laughs> he, he was my best mate, this little bloke, right? Right, oh, here he is, look. And by the way, he won the he rode the winner of the ten thousand guineas last year. That's Willie Carson when he was a kid. <laughs> it's just if you hear what he says, he's saying like, hey, this is what you do. You tell him that you're selling stuff collated and packed by the disabled, and that you have got you know full ID, right? Or whatever, whatever you want to say. <laughs> Let's go out and tell him. Oh, miss you, I've got some mucky gear if you want it. <laughs> so we have shown him the ropes. Yeah. To go things like. On, like, go through the box, it's in the box. Like, yeah. First thing you come to is ironing board covers. Ironing board covers. Like, ironing board covers. There's two sizes, a standard and a large. Right, so that's guaranteed yeah. and things like that. <laughs> so ironing board covers, standard and large. Chamois levers, dust Chamois boots, levers, made towels, of tissue. Oven gloves, washing up sets, children's colouring books, mm. note lit sets, pegs, anything like that. So it's all yeah. priced and guaranteed. Yeah. Take your cheques, I know it's a bad day to come around, then you're on your side, all that sort of cake. Because yeah. right. we took cheques, we take cheques, we take access cards, We'll take anything we can grab while they're in the kitchen getting the money, basically. <laughs> so we showed him the ropes and he's gonna go and do it. Try and get a first sale. Come on. Ladies come in there. Just remember what you've been told. Well, I sort of told you, love. Oh, I'm selling flight. goods collating and pet by the disabled. Good. Here's my identification. I wonder if you'd be interested in think we've got uh, ironing bolts, shammy levers, uh, well we've got some of these colouring books here if you'd be interested. No, not ironing boards. <laughs> Ironing board covers, not uh, not not surfboard. Surf. <laughs> never mind, never mind. She's she's passed over that mistake. The ironing board covers. She's got the kid there. She don't want to look mean yes, in front of her kid. Yes, one of those, please. Yes. Like, oh, everything's uh, guaranteed. Brilliant. He's got a yeah. sale. Fine. Um, well, if you'd like yeah, to take it, you'll have to take it and have a look at it. And this is the one thing we forgot to tell him. Whatever you do, don't say to them you can take it out and have a look at it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the big mistake. I actually want to, yeah. It's a nice okay. one. I like yeah. the colour of that one. Lovely colour. Nothing at all wrong with the colour. Any amount of colour. Oops. Oh, okay, I can't take that one. It's practically ripped in half. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Who did you say it was packed by? <laughs> we said it was packed by disabled people. <laughs> Hard-faced suburban bitch. <laughs> What's she expecting? Some of Dan Arads or something? <laughs> oh, these people can hardly move. <laughs> so he had the right hunt with us no, anyway, because of what we've done to him. Oh, really? I don't know what to say. Wrap it up, back in the bag, <laughs> no sale. I mean, I'll do it. 
terrible embarrassment. Where am I You're not supposed not. to show the gear, you idiot. <laughs> 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 You've got no fucking advice. Yeah, well, I'm going to tell you when you're standing at the door. Oh, you out of order. Someone's played a trick on me. Oh, all the gear's pony, that. Paul. You don't. All the gear's you know, pony. You know, first door, give me a bit of comfort. Yeah, but all the right. gear's like that, you're Wally. <laughs> It's all pony, you wally. <laughs> oh, they were great days. Great days. Great lads. Royal wedding. The royal wedding, yeah. <laughs> we, had jo we had Charles and Di oven gloves. We had Charles and Di kitchen things. Charles. We, had, we had Charles and Di photo albums. Photo albums, yeah. Charles and Di photo albums. They were, they were worth two, Bob. They went for fiver, wasn't it? They was PVC covered, right? And they stuck a thing on it saying real leather. And of course, people were sort of going, yeah, Fiverr we was charging for that them. That was the biggest joke. That, that, was, was. A, that was the biggest written from Bastards. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah, people pay five pounds of their hard-earned money for a real leather Charles and Dive photo album, and they're ripping them off. Bastards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bought one of them, look. <laughs> Charles and Diane, five pounds. Oh, never mind. I'll keep it anyway, because it's got such wonderful sentimental... Oh, my pictures. You want to see some pictures? Oh, show me pictures. Look, here's me when I was in the film Reservoir Dogs. Right? <laughs> no, that is me. That's Mr. <laughs> Mr. Green, Mr. Blue, Mr. Black, Mr. Yellow and Mr. Blobby. Yeah, right? <laughs> and uh, there's me when I was in East 17, right? <laughs> Outside a chip shop. And uh, here's me and a young lady friend of mine from Baywatch. <laughs> checking her for lumps. Right? So that's that. I'll tell you what now, if you don't mind, I've got to go to the toilet. As you know, I go to the toilet at the same time every night because I've got this disease I picked up when I was a missionary in Suriname. All right? So I'll go to the toilet, but while I'm gone, you listen to some music, yeah? I'll play some brilliant music.
And after that, it's on to the day centre where you'll lay the foundation, ma'am. Do they have a trowel? Yes, ma'am, that's all been arranged. And then it's on to Batsy, ma'am. And all the arrangements have been finalised? Yes, ma'am, there'll be a presentation to ma'am. Driver? Yes, ma'am? Do the brakes work on this thing? You'll find out in a minute, Your Majesty. <laughs> crime stuff again of my brother all right I, I particularly want to show you this because I don't know if anyone's here has ever been in trouble with the police I have obviously he's a, well Kennedy assassination and all that kind of thing. <laughs> but this this is a particular little scene what's happened here is the police uh, are out on patrol and they've spotted their suspect okay and they've identified him quite simply because um, well, main reason being, I suspect, that he's walking out of London with a big white circle around him. <laughs> there he is. Right, so they stop the him. Stop. All right, so they've arrested him, uh, chatting with him. He's now, he's had a thought. He's had a little thought. He's thinking, hang on, there's two of them. They're quite fit. Probably play rugby on the weekend, maybe for barbarians, who knows. <laughs> but, you know, I look after myself, and I really think that if I had a go... If I got a head start on them, element of surprise, I could run away from them. Let's see how he gets on. He answers the description of the suspect put out in the paging system. He's getting ready. He's off! Oh, they've got him. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have another look. Here we go. Here we go. You can see the moment where his muscles and his leg tense up. Just like, just like Linford before the start at 100 metres. He's, he's going to be system. away. No. <laughs> Three steps he got. Bless his heart, right? So he's off, we're losing. Uh, I want to show you a little bit more now. Um, some of you people have been around before, haven't you? I've chatted to you before. And last time you were around, I, I showed you something. I showed you a little clip, my favourite clip. And uh, no apologies, I'm going to show it again, because I think it is one of the finest things you're ever going to see, right? It's a football match, which obviously in this country means a fight. <laughs> uh, all having a fight. One man I think you should watch for very, very carefully in this fight is the man I call Morse, right? The greatest policeman ever, PC304, on the radio. PC304, there's a fight going on. Well, I can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to get involved, does he? One more little look. I'm sorry, I know, I'm boring you, but I don't care. Look, look. It's all going on. It's all going on. Break it up. Well, I can't see it. We've got a tree break coming up. But these are the heroes of this bit, right? These guys on the terraces. These on the terraces. These guys, hard men, on the roof. We're going up there. We're going to watch the match from the roof, right? And they're all quite hard, but the hardest of all is him. Because they're all sitting down. He's standing up. Oh! <laughs> down he goes. Bless him. Look, let's have another look at him. Up you come. Uh, he's there, right? And I've said it before and I'll say it again. The man responsible here is him, right? <laughs> because he's holding a flag. And all he has to do is keep hold of this flag and he'll be all right. Just hold on to the flag. Hold on to it. Uh, no! There he goes. <laughs> and he's there. And he wasn't... Oh, look, there's the copper. Back off the tea break. I don't want to know if they're fighting, but if they're lying unconscious on the ground, I'll be in there. <laughs> I'll have a dig. No trouble at all with that one. So he's, he's gone. Uh, and a little bit more of this now. This is the documentary I told you about that was made about, about my mates, the knockers. This goes forward ten years. This goes forward ten years, and one of the lads who was on the knock with us is now desperately trying to find a job oh, in the building trade. He's unemployed, which is a terrible here. blight on millions of people in this country. Hardy tail. So he's going up now to see the foreman. No trouble for me, I'm in the building game. Cameraman hedging along behind him. Big bum shot there. So he goes and has a chat with the foreman and sees if there's any work. And basically there isn't. Yeah, that's what you said before. Yeah. 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 All right, mate, I'll give you another knock another time. Cheers, mate. Sorry, mate, no work. And he now starts getting a bit strange, cos his theory is this. Cos he can't get a job in the building game, the building game ain't worth a toss anymore, all right? 
Everything's gone wrong with it, just because he's not working in it. Look, this ladder, for instance. Now, this is what's happened to the game. Like, this should all be tied up, and it ain't fucking tied up. It's bollocks, man. <laughs> No, I mean, they give us an hard hat to wear, but they won't put a clip on the fucking ladder. Give us a hard hat to wear. They haven't given you one. <laughs> it's only the people with jobs that have got hard hats. <laughs> you know the bus, Look, Job, yeah. job, yeah, no <laughs> job. <laughs> all right, mate. All right, that's all the best. Nice. Just, I just want to show you this, mate. Let's spin it back nice as He does this horrible thing now, which we all do. If you ever been in a situation, you go in a room, in a pub, anything, and someone just says, get out, mate, nobody likes you here. And as you come out of the room or the pub, you see some of your friends, and you don't want them to know how humiliated you've been, so you start telling lies to the door and going, yeah, we had a great time, didn't we, lads? <laughs> Super. Anyway, I've got to go. Yeah, I'll come back again and see you. That's exactly what he does. He gets sent out with no job and makes things up. Nice one, mate. Yeah, lovely. What, well, back here? All right, Steve? Steve, nobody there called Steve. <laughs> God almighty. Did you get a job? He said come back in a couple of weeks, but I think we're all that palaver. Liar. He never said come back in a week. He said go away and never darken our building site again. <laughs> and another thing, one of the few jobs I've never done is the building trade. Never worked in it. Maybe you have, maybe you can... Is this a word that they use in the building trade? I don't know, it doesn't sound like it. He said, come back in a couple of weeks, but I think we're all that palaver. Palaver? <laughs> Not a building man's word, are you? Oh, dear, Terry's dropped his trowel. Oh, what palaver? <laughs> anyway, off he goes now. It's bollocks. It's total bollocks, mate. The game's fucked. All I want is a job. At the end of the day, they ain't got one for me. It's bollocks. All I want is a job. At the end of the day, they ain't got one for me. It's bollocks. Very poignant phrase, and it's actually taken from the Labour Party manifesto, I think. <laughs> but he's a smashing... Did you recognise him, by the way? You did recognise him, didn't you? You've seen him before. No, look, have a, I'll show it you again. He's, he's the bloke out the football thing. Have a look. Man. That's what's happened to the game. I should have had a clip on that roof. <laughs> I could do that with a scarf and I won't put a fucking clip on the roof. <laughs> Total bollocks. So you don't watch the game then? Well, he said come back in a couple of weeks. <laughs> but of all that palaver. <laughs> well, I want a decent view. At the end of the day, they ain't got one for me. The game's fucked. <laughs> Right, this is, this is my favourite bit. I'm going to carry on playing it. This is my favourite bit. This is where they have a fight, right? Because when we was young, we used to love to fight. I want you to watch the fight, and I want you to watch out for what I call the convenient sticks. Here they come. This is a rival firm, and they're on their manor, and they don't like it, OK? They had a Millwall mob. And he don't like it. Oh, Robin Asquith's got the ump, look. What's all this about, then? Talking about, eh? Knock him around here, it's just my area. Fuck all do you, is it? We're not going to work. And they're thinking, hang on, how many are in that van? <laughs> one, two. There's only about three of them. We could have them, couldn't we? There's about seven of us, there's three of them. There's seven, come on. Yeah, there's seven. Oh, bollocks, there's hundreds of them. <laughs> Convenient sticks. Excuse me, excuse me. There's a shop here that only sells sticks for fighting with, look. <laughs> uh, good old fight. Oh, fight, fight, fight. Another thing, right, any young people watching? Yeah, you fight these days, you fight with razors and bottles. In my day, you just gave someone a good kick up the arse, look. Kick him up the arse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And just <laughs> on a very small point, let's bring this back. The other thing you did in those days, if someone ever attacked you with a stick, you just gave them a little slap like that. Like, <laughs> what's this part here? What? Oh, what a lava! <laughs> and a great piece of great piece of cowardice coming up. Look, everyone in the van. Come on! Come on! <laughs> we'll have you! No, you 
driving away in a van. No, <laughs> come on. <coughs> terrible, terrible times. Lovely times, but violent times. And, and what, what made people fight? What made young men get to that stage where they had to physically beat each other? I think it was Sartre or Proust or someone said that there are only two types of people in the world and tried to define it in psychological terms. I think this next man explains it a little bit more clearly, really. What happened was me and this fella, uh, we was knocking and we come across this other firm and they was on our prop. So we argued with them, like, said, you swag, you've been knocking our prop, like, you know, another firm, we don't like it. Because, like, we are the chaps of the road, like, you know what I mean? We do, we do the best figures, right? Like, we're all football. And all the others were just muggy boneheads anyway, like, you know. <laughs> We're football, they're muggy boneheads. <laughs> Only two types of people in the world, football and muggy bonehead. <laughs> now, as a bit of a guide, I can tell you that I have actually written a, a little book about this, which is coming out in print in the new year, and this will explain to you... Come over here, I'll sit down, I'll show it to you. This explains exactly what is football and what's muggy bonehead. Yeah, there's a few things. Terry Way, Muggy Bonehead, <laughs> Jimbo and football. <laughs> Anne, Muggy Bonehead, Nick, Muggy Bonehead, Anna and Nick, Muggy Bonehead. <laughs> Bruce Willis and Demi Moore, Muggy Bonehead, George and Mildred, football. Simple as that. Uh, Chuck Ice, football, Coffee Vionetta, Muggy, Muggy Bonehead. Go out to the toilet, football. Go out to the toilet with someone waiting outside, <laughs> Muggy Bonehead. And even football, right? See this football? Football. This football, Muggy Bonehead. <laughs> it's simple, isn't it? Uh, Gary Glitter, Muggy Bonehead. Nanette Newman, Muggy Bonehead. But Gary Newman, football. Cindy Crawford, who's a girlfriend of mine. You, I don't know, you might know, you might not. But we went out, right? We went clubbing and discotheque and all that. So drunk, right? When we got home, she's lost her dress, right? She went out of her dress on, and then we come home, she ain't got it on, so I'll come back and see if I can find her for it. But I don't know. I've no idea where she could have lost it, to be honest. I don't know. I don't know where it is. I'm, what, what am I going to do? Where could she have lost the damn thing? I don't know. Sorry, I don't usually do that, we in the street, but I've been drinking so much milk, I had to go to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> this is, well, you know what this is, I don't need to show you. Look, turn it on and you, you'll see what it is. Greatest programme on television in any country. Here it comes. Country practice. And when we watch this, we play this little game, right? Excuse me, I understand that some pants have gone missing. <laughs> well, I've been trying to get in touch with my karma, and I don't know where they are. Well, I'll have a look in this vegetable plot, see if I can find them. I'm here, don't worry. I've come straight from the set of Dactari. Oh, I'm trying to look English going around on my bike. I don't know where they are. I'm all right, I've got my dog. <laughs> My dog will sniff out the missing underpants. <laughs> I've put a notice on the board. Anybody finding any underpants? I don't care, I'm just playing golf. Poxy underpants. <laughs> I'll go on the horse, if you like, and we can canter about the field. No, I'm fishing. I'm fishing for the underpants. I'll come and help you. Where are the underpants? Oh, there they are! <laughs> there 
There's the underpants right there. Joyce Jacobs had them all the time. Imagine the humiliation for that woman. Right, Joyce, opening titles, OK? We want to show everybody in their best light. Somebody's going to be riding, somebody fishing. We'd like you holding out some tea-stained underpants, please, if you don't mind. <laughs> I just want to show you this, right? This, uh, this, uh, I'll just show you this one little bit more of this, right? This is what I was telling you about, the documentary made about me and my mates. And my, the, my best mate was the bloke who did this, right? He was the most haranguing salesman you can imagine in the history of the world, right? He's seen this woman, he's given her all the patter, and he's, he's, he's getting nowhere. Go in. Take the goods. Shush. Shush? Shush. Yeah. Yeah. Shut up. Well, what we do is, right, we sell, sell the goods, right? Yeah. Some of the money goes towards the disabled. Yeah. Some, some of the money. Like, oh, yeah. Pens. Going out for the day, it's out to seasides, things like that. We sell dog and, uh, poison. Keeps people like myself a job. Keeps us employed. Yeah. All the goods are reasonably priced. All the good value. Yeah. So he's giving her all the spiel, right? It's for the disabled, right? And um, she's just an impossible customer. Not really. No? No. no. Can't you buy? I mean, I'm just not I mean, what's, what's, what's £1? What's £1.25? £1.25, but I'm not interested. Mm. You've got to be interested. You've got to be interested. Yeah. But there's all disabled people everywhere. Yes, I'm... There's all disabled people <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Horrible cow. Yeah. And you're not willing to help none of them? I am, but not through. Oh, I can't say no more than that, can I? No, you can't. Your attitude's really out of order, I think. <laughs> so, your attitude's really out of order, I think. <laughs> and quite rightly so. I told you before that my mate there, he was a brilliant salesman, right? He really was. And I know some good salesmen. My brother does double glazing. He sold about £400,000 worth of double glazing in one month. But he, even he will stand up and admit that the greatest saleswoman in the world is this woman here. Just let me explain briefly. She sells cosmetic surgery, all right? You want to have a nose job, you want to have your body improved, she's there to sell it for you. And anything that she can do to get a sale, she will do. It's my Auntie Pat, by the way. And they made a documentary about her, right? And, yeah, just watch it. To get a picture of the sales methods used, we asked an actress to answer an advertisement for breast augmentation. We secretly filmed this meeting. It's the boobs you want to have done, and I know why, because you're a tall lady, you've got big shoulders and you're flat there. Big shoulders. Yeah. And it doesn't go with the rest of you, does it? No. You know, you probably don't feel right, do you? Not really. I mean, well, how... I used to have boobs, that was the thing. I used to have them before I had children. It's a very, very easy operation. The actual operation, Julie, only takes 45 minutes. 45 Is minutes? Yeah. yeah. So it's only that nice. Yeah, have no, a look. Actually, Oh my God, you can't. I mean, they are so separate. <laughs> and I'll let you see what goes inside you. Sorry. I'll let you feel it. <laughs> I'll let you feel it, and you'll see what goes inside you. A line we've all used, surely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it feels completely natural. I mean, in my bus, it's so natural. There's no way. Is there any scarring? You can't even see it. I think it's only my, where my bra mark is. I hope. Mm. There she is. <laughs> the greatest saleswoman in the history of the world. That's her. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, it is, I understand, it's very difficult, really, to not know what to do because, you know, you obviously don't feel right, do you? Yeah. Because he's, he's a very broad shouldered man, isn't he? He is a broad man, yes, but there's nothing. Nothing. No, it. it before we had children, of course, it was different. Yeah, before children, it would be fine, yeah. obviously. Well, there is an operation we can do. Uh, actually, it's very, very simple. The whole operation only takes 45 minutes. Really? Yeah. Really? 45 minutes, it's all done that night. So, here, let me show you. <laughs> no, no, thank you. Well, you, you've got to want to feel. <laughs> no. But there's thousands of men with small penises all over the world, and you... You don't want to ever feel? Well, not yours, no. <laughs> not a lot I can say then, really, is there? No, there isn't. Oh, sorry, I think your attitude's totally out of order. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> right, now, watch this, watch this. Right, don't let anyone know I told you how to do that. Look, right, phone card, right? Now, just bend the corner. Right, now, watch this, look. Say nothing. Slip that in, right? Now, watch that. 888896. Right? Now, just be very careful, right? The next thing you know. There you go, there you go. <laughs> Say nothing, come on.
Here we go. Got one for you now. This is my this is my other uncle, right? This is my uncle Nigel. Right? He took the video, funny enough, of the caravan. My uncle Nigel is quite a sad man. I don't think pathetic would be too strong a word. <laughs> he's about 50 now. He's very short. He's only about four foot two. All right? And one of his ambitions is always be on the television. And he's got on the program You Bet. All right? Here he is. Now, let me tell you what he's got to do on this program. Oh, by the way, he drives a go car. All right? Now, this is his challenge. All right? Let's set him up. Do you, know, do you know what You Bet is? It's the problem you go and you do a challenge, and if you win, you win a You Bet Betsy, and if you lose, you, ha you have to do a forfeit. And this is what he's got to do. He's got to, he's got to pin on the back of that go-kart, and he's got to burst all of these balloons. Three, four, five, six, seven balloons. He's got two minutes to do it. Bang! See what he does? He skids round, hits them with the pin, and they're burst. He's already done one, right? I reckon he'll do it in under a minute. He's brilliant. And now one. Mm, missed that one, but it's all right. One out of two. Here he goes. He'll have this one. No trouble at all. Does a big turn round, comes back, skids round, and knocks it over. <laughs> so the little person has to come and help him by pushing it in. His confidence is, is, is rock solid, though. He's got no trouble. Here he goes. <laughs> Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down, balloon there. Couldn't even knock it over. And he's starting to panic now. You can see the panic in his eyes. Oh, just nudges into it. And now thinks, oh, I've changed the game now. Now I haven't got to burst them. I've got to try and land as far away from them as I can. <laughs> Bang that one out of the way. Look, here he comes. Look, see how far away he can land. Oh, oh, no, sorry. Sorry. Don't ever let anyone tell you that the camera doesn't lie, OK? Just have a look at this last one. You quite clearly see the pin missing the balloon, which then very mysteriously bursts anyway on the way back. <laughs> Little man with a pin crawls in. Oh, we've got to help him out. Here he goes. Far away. Oh, he's about three foot away there. He can do better than that. It's all right. You've still got over a minute to burst the other ones. Come on, come on. No, six foot away. <laughs> Getting more and more pathetic. And you can see in his eyes that at this point, he's suddenly thinking, I'm an old man <laughs> in a red boiler suit <laughs> and a helmet on national television, making a complete and utter dick of myself. And he's got 45, 40 seconds left, right? Now, if somebody says you've only got 40 seconds to live, you think, well, I'm dead already then, because that's no time. But if you think, oh, we've got to watch him miss these balloons for another 40 seconds, wow, time drags, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's getting nowhere. And we're all at home watching it. Oh, come on, Nigel's on the telly. Ho withholding the honour of the family. Look, oh, knocked it completely off the screen, that one. Two people have to bring it in. He's looking sad. At... Matthew's egging him on. Come on, 15 seconds. You can do it. You know you can do it. And his plan was to burst them all and do a big twirl and finish facing the camera in the middle of the ring. And he has to finish in this horrible, ignominious little position. <laughs> Hold it off. Poor man. And Matthew gives him very short shrift, gives him his medal and his scroll, and piss off, sad boy. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew. God almighty. That's what's happened to the game. They should have had a clip on that go-kart. It's all bollocks, man. All I wanted was a You Bet Betsy. And at the end of the day, they ain't got one for me. It's all bollocks. Never mind. Come sit down. Yeah, all right. <laughs> This time, this time, I'll do it. <laughs> here we go, here we go. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in! No! Oh. All right, cheat it for me, move it. Move it, I'm doing it, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it! Oh. <laughs> so what are you going to do, then? Well, he said come back in a couple of weeks, but what with all that? Palava. <laughs>
about these people out here, media land, you know, niche. <laughs> <laughs> what? What are you talking about, mate? You all want to know, but you know nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah, and what is there to know exactly? Lots. <laughs>